to another Mr. Beast Fight video, and this one's a little bit different insofar as we're revisiting this C9. Now, I made a video on this a uh, while back, um, sorting out a uh, head motor um, issue. Uh, it was a head motor issue. <laughs> I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, basically, um, the heads weren't switching properly, and uh, one of the um, the pickups for the uh, head magnets had gone open circuit, which was really a very bizarre fault. So that was a fun one, and I'll link to that video because uh, <laughs> it was fun. Um, and then we had an open circuit head chip, which again, really odd. Um, it's a shame because the head disc itself was really good. Very low hours unit. Um, so yeah. So I ended up changing the drum and um, putting some decent used heads, um, good used heads on. And, uh, you know, I mean, it played back fine, but uh, we do have a problem insofar as the stills um, trick mode is really poor. So it's good to play. And you see that's lovely. And then go to pause and it will just do that. So, um, and what's actually happening, uh, as far as I can tell, I did put the scope on and um, I can see that from the stills head, um, I have got terrible um, uh, noise coming through. Um, but I know the heads are good, and um, I therefore have to suspect that I've got a problem with the coils. Um, between the the um, moving section here and the bottom, or the base of the drum in, inside here, there are two uh, rotating um, uh, coils, basically, sets of coils. And um, what can happen over time is the glue that um, sets the coils into the um, into the the ferrite material starts to fail, and that can cause all sorts of problems. And if you get it sort of dragging against the other coil, or you're just dragging, basically, it can break the coil or can damage the coil. So that's what I figure is happening with this. Now, when I did that uh, previous video, I thought I picked up the right drum. And I think I mentioned in that video, actually, that I didn't. <laughs> I actually picked up a drum that um, came as a test unit for um, a Sony case, or the Sony case that I use uh, for alignment and heads, head alignment and all the rest of it and uh, tape talk and that did say that it was bad and that the heads were bad as well but it was just really just a test for testing and uh, playing about with the kits <laughs> i put that one on and i think i'm paying the price for that now so i actually have this drum and uh, i've not done anything to this this is just as it's come but it's very low hours it's actually really good. Um, we'll just test because I'm starting to doubt whether maybe I might have picked up the wrong one. Um, I.e. this is the one that was faulty from that previous video. So let's just test the coils. And I should get about 370 ohms on these, maybe. Yeah, 360. Three sixty six. Three sixty seven. So all about about right. Um can't remember which one was open circuit on the other one. But uh yeah, it doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna do also is just check the um the coils read fine 
So, I will say I've never done this before. I suppose I've never had calls. So I'm sort of intrigued to see what these read. Oh, I if I can actually get the probe in. So, 0 0.6. Uh, I would expect this 0 0.6 because they are very short length coils. 0 0.5, 0 0.6. There we go. Uh, so that's cool. Let's do the top coils, which I need a screwdriver for. I mean, all this is proving is that they're not open circuit. So. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that these are perfect and the glue's bad or whatever. Although I have to say I've had a low rate of failure with um, Sony's. Whoops. So I would expect the same. Point five. Seven uh, that's interesting. Point three. What do I get when I short the leads? Point two. So that that's interesting that that is actually quite it's like not not point one taking into account the slight skew with the, uh, the meter there. So, well, I hope it's okay. It should be okay. Um, I don't see any reason why not. And like I say, this, this I know, I'm pretty confident is a good uh, lower drum. And uh, yeah, it's very low hours relatively. And uh, not even sure what the issue was with the machine that was from, but, uh, yeah, anyway, with that, I suppose we better start getting this machine apart and um, get the head drum out. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to take the top off. Um, in fact, while I tell you, I'll take the top off. Um, so I'm going to take um, the old drum out complete put the replacement drum in as is and then with the old drum uh, I'm going to take the upper drum off and the heads and uh, we'll take it from there I think I think that's the way I want to do it I do much prefer taking machines apart uh, the, the heads apart the head assemblies and whatever um, I do much prefer taking the um, heads apart, uh, like drums and whatever, in a machine. Uh, if the heads are good, because it's just so much more stable. You're far less likely to do damage, in my humble opinion. Um, but on this occasion, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to take the drum out, put the other drum in, swap it out outside the machine. So, uh, there we go, the beauty of the uh, C9 deck there. So, Tracks. I never get tired of that. And uh, yeah, I suppose we ought to start stripping this down. Okay, so I've removed the um, head amp board um, completely. I, I just move it out of the way. Uh, this is the uh, connector. connector we were checking on the other. Comes up through the deck here. This is a little. Um, 
cable management screw in what's we call it there and what I'm going to do because I am not going to disturb these is just remove these screws one-handed with a magnetized screwdriver I love magnetized screwdrivers there we go and uh, hey presto that bit's done I suppose we can get this off as well it needs to come off which I'm probably going to need two hands for maybe not maybe Oh no, there we go. That's my challenge done. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, with that, let's uh, crack on, I suppose. Um, yeah, this has the later drum, so this is a harder alloy. So I'll be using that with the other drum uh, as and when. So uh, yeah, that's really cool. So this is a fun one. Um, I just thought, just for the sheer hell of it, I would um, solder across from the playback head. So the, the head that's used um, for play on the, the dual chip chip um, is on the left here see the blue and the, the white wires and what I've done is I've soldered across um, two uh, wires these yellow ones these are from the, the other side of that chip assembly uh, for the stills so this is stills um, head chip uh, to give the extra wide sort of gap if you like um, reading area for the tape to get the perfect stills uh, I've just shorted that uh, across to the playback head and uh, yeah let's let's see let's see what happens I don't expect this to be perfect at all because I'm I'm back to a two head machine but um, <clears throat> there's the, the playback and the pause and you can see the pause <laughs> actually is not bad at all um, that is literally reading off the um, the playback head um, which of course it's reading off the playback head twice um, for the because of the gap but you can see that well in theory I've either got a problem with the head chip or I've got a problem with the the, the actual drum so I'm pretty confident the heads are good um, that's not to say that I'm 100% confident because they are second-hand heads, although they checked fine. Remember in the video, they checked fine on the meter, but of course that doesn't mean anything. I do actually have close-up photography of the uh, chips using a microscope, and uh, they check uh, perfectly, uh, no damage to the chips at all. So it's sort of... It's a bit smoke and, and mirrors, but uh, I'm pretty confident that I've got a problem with this drum. And uh, like I say, given the dubious history of this drum, it just has to be. So uh, yeah, let's carry on and get this, this changed. So I actually decided to reverse the, um, the heads. Um, so I'm now using the still head as a playback head. And this is what I'm getting. And as you can see, I've got quite a substantial noise bar at the bottom, which you'd expect because it's just that little bit, um, a few degrees out. And, but if I pre press pause, it's still bad. The, these heads are bad. Um, so I don't need to change the drum, which is nice. But, uh, oh, what a pain. 
it's a shame because these heads were um well I was really hoping they were good but obviously they're not so uh going to have to get back to uh, Gabriel and see if he has any more um I don't think I have any more good heads here but I might have to check but um ah oh, that's really disappointing it's it's a shame and uh yeah not the best result so let's press this turn again play to expect that bar but uh it shouldn't be noisy you should just have a noise bar at the bottom so yeah oh well but at least i have to change the drum that's a, a sort of change the whole uh whole emphasis of this video isn't it um so one thing to note as well um i'm running the head amp um board with no cans on and this will introduce noise so um obviously not that much noise but it will introduce some noise so you get you'll get like um sparklies and and just basically rf noise creeping in causing sort of white streaks all over the place so don't worry about that if you do run one of these with the, the cans off uh it's really not the best thing to do to be honest and um i mean i'm just doing it because i'm messing about with the heads but uh yeah <sighs> not the best outcome but ever onwards so i'm actually going to leave this one here because uh basically we know the heads are bad just needs new heads uh, we know the machine is good because we've done all the work on it previously so i just need to put new heads on and uh, it's really straightforward on these honestly it's so easy there's no alignment um you just literally just plonk them on and um there's no mechanical alignment and then just use a scope to to double check they're okay usually they need very little adjustment if we've got good heads but uh yeah so with that, thank you very much for watching and see you in another video. Bye for now. Just when you thought the video was over, um, I have actually changed the heads now and uh, finished off the machine. Um, and uh, it's, it's really good, really good quality. And if I go to still, oh, that was a terrible shot. This is quite a worn tape as well. And it's a mass-produced one, so <laughs> not always the best, but I'm really pleased with that. Um, it's it's just working so well, and the tracking, I mean, if I go furthest left, I know the light's shining on the TV, but furthest left, furthest right, it's really, really good. Uh, so yeah, so there we have it. So I now have a beautiful C9 and with that I really am going now <laughs> Thank you very much for watching See you in another video